I'm recording. Um, this is a response video. It's one of those ones um, to a channel that I watch, uh, Theoria or Theoria Apophasis. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, to tell you the whole and honest truth. I don't even know if I've got the second part of that right either. But anyway, Ken. Um, he's just done a video on subject versus citizen. Um, self-reliance and common sense um, and he's right on a lot of stuff but one thing that I think was um, maybe confused is subject versus citizen he hints at them being two different things really and although the words are different <laughs> I would I would stick them in the same in a category that's interchangeable, you know. If you're a subject, you are subject to certain rules and regulations of whoever's in, in, in authority, okay? The same with citizen. If you are a citizen, you are subject to the same rules and regulations, okay? Um, I'm not really sure at which point um, one becomes an actual citizen at which point there is jurisdiction over over a oh, well I know there's no jurisdiction over a real living man but this is the deception this is the trick okay anyway um, not to go waffling on too long I just wanted to make that point that there really isn't much difference between a subject and a citizen okay um, both of them are subject to whatever rules and regulations are put in place by the authorities, okay, that govern them, okay. The only way that you would not be subject uh, to any of these rules and regulations was to declare your own being um, on the earth, you know. Or to these people, and you don't. I mean, you only have to do is put it in the public, um, what your intentions as a being is, and that's only out of common decency. You know, you don't. I don't know if you necessarily actually have to do that even. But um, my my biggest thing, my biggest um, my biggest um, I don't know thing to give to anybody watching this video um, would be look at the Declaration of Independence okay go and study that understand natural law and figure out who you really are because the so-called citizen that they have jurisdiction over is not the real living man Okay, but we get we're getting deep into it, and I just wanted to make the the distinction between. Um, I just wanted to make the point that there's not really a distinction between subject and citizen. Subject's one of these things that you know is a kind of an old school um, word, I would guess, and I guess you know the the whole citizen thing. I think people, you know, they get upset a little bit with the idea of being a subject. So a citizen's a bit more of a um, a gentler term, let's put it that way, um, for something that means the same thing. That's it in a nutshell. Ken, if you're watching this, um, here's a question. To have true instantaneous action at a distance, I mean, do we have a, a tool that is um, that can go to a level of error that we can actually know if we have instantaneous action at a distance? With that being said, is it possible that 
if we do have proper instantaneous action at a distance, is it possible that the ether actually is nothing? I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Um, I don't know. It's an idea, isn't it? Um, instead of having something like a um, a fabric of the ether, what about actually having some form of nothingness in which stuff springs from the same way as the same way as your your um, forces within the magnet all converge to a centre point which would be nothing true nothingness that can never be reached don't know um, I don't know where I'm going with that comment to tell you the truth there's a theory for you I haven't sat and thought about it an awful lot I just you know I could do a sitting and thinking about it a little bit and how that would work but um, anyway it's a question for you uh, maybe you can do a video on it that'd be great love your videos by the way awesome stuff um, even though I can't bloody understand any of it <laughs> uh, I am trying though I am trying um, and of course, a lot of that stuff makes sense. So um, anyway, thanks and good day.